Good morning and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. But it doesn't matter if it's Thanksgiving for a yogi. Every day is a day of thanks. Just like Valentine's Day for a yogi. You don't need one day a year to say, oh, I love you. Every day is a day to express love. So we're doing what's trans-historical and trans-temporal. Yogis have been practicing this for thousands of years. It has nothing to do with what time of year, what season, what your condition is. This is the search for the real. It goes on irrespective of what's happening. Uh, in your historical moment or your geographical location. So let's do it. All right, you're going to touch your thumb to your ring and pinky, index and middle stretched out straight, and then you join them together, Ubaya Katari Mudra, both scissors, both scissors, both scissors. It also rep represents the passionate kiss or the act of lovemaking between lovers. So... Now is the chance for you to make love to your deity. All right, so with that saying, today we're doing Chandra Bedna. We're moving on to Mulabandha. Having done the Kumbhakas to teach you how to hold the breath, now you're going to squeeze the locks. So Mulabandha is the lower abdominal area, with or without the anal sphincter being involved, Ashwini Mudra or not. But lower abdominal area, in and up, while you do the inhalation, then you let it go, and you exhale through the opposite nostril. All right, so let's get going. Take your stance. Chalandara Bandha, and for a few moments, inspect your own sitting posture. Your asana is like a mandala, okay? It has a form, there is a center, and then everything radiates outward from that center evenly. And it's, this is where we're going to learn to study the complexities and intricacies of our own breathing. All right, let's begin. Exhale our breath. Raise the hand. Block the right, open the left, inhale. Now squeeze the root lock in and up. Let the lock go, block the left, open the right, exhale. Relax the hand, one and done, restore your breath. Get into that exhale, raise the hand again, block the right, open the left, inhale. Wait there, pull the root lock. Release the lock, block the left, open the right, exhale. Relax the hand and restore the breath, one and done. As the exhale releases out of the body, Raise the hand, third cycle, first round. Block right, open left, inhale. Now wait there, pull the root lock. Release the lock, block left, open right, exhale. Relax the hand and restore the breathing. So Chandra means moon, Vedna means piercing, passing through. So the moon channel, the left nostril, goes to the right brain. So you know we're working on the parasympathetic nervous system and using our breath to move us into a calm state of mind. So fully get here, because like they say, there's no other place you have to be, nothing else you have to do, no one else you have to serve right now. So this is the enlightened selfishness. You take the time out for yourself, you'll be much more available to everything that you have to deal with in your life. All right, second round is going to be partially closed left nostril inhale, mulabandha, open right nostril exhale. Let's get to it. Establish your stance, exhale the breath, raise the hand. Block left, narrow, block right, narrow the left inhale. Now wait there in root lock. Release the lock, block left, open right, exhale.
flex the hand and the start of breathing. So the bandhas have a lot to do with the esoteric philosophy in yoga about <clears throat> moving the energy and combining the eliminative force from below with the pranic force from above and the mixing together like fire and water is going to create a certain kind of electricity and um, we're going to open up the dormant potential called the kundalini. So let's not talk about it, let's just do it. Exhale the breath, raise the hand, block the right, narrow the left, inhale. Now wait there, pull the root lock. Release, block left, open right, exhale. Relax the hand, restore the breathing. So the tapas part of practicing pranayama is to be ardent, wholehearted, enthusiastic, eager, resolute, unwavering, <clears throat> diligent, conscientious throughout every day. Like, is the sun going to come up in the east again? Every day. We're going to do it every day. Third cycle, second round. Exhale the breath, raise the hand. Block right, narrow, block right, narrow the left, inhale. Wait there. Squeeze the root lock. Release the lock, block left, open right, exhale. Relax the hand and restore the breathing. As every aspect of yoga, it is not merely a subject <clears throat> to be discussed, like philosophy or religion or psychology or mysticism but it's a reality to be experienced. And that's what we're here to do. Third cycle is going to be open left nostril inhale, mulabandha root lock, partially closed right nostril exhale. All right, stay one pointed. This is a chance to practice the next level of, of chitta bhumi, or at least be aware of. The third one is called ekagrata, one pointedness. Sometimes you see it as ekagra. That means your focus is better, your clarity is greater, your ego is a little thinner, not so thick, not so heavy, and your intuition starts awakening. Let's find out. Exhale the breath, raise the hand. Block the right, open the left and inhale. Pull the root lock. Let the lock go, block the left, narrow the right, and exhale. Drop the hand and restore the breathing. So we're letting our thinking mind relax, stop figuring things out, and let the witness consciousness remain wide awake. Exhale the breath, raise the hand, block the right, Open the left inhale. Now wait there, pull the root lock. Release the lock, block the left, narrow the right, exhale. Release the hand and restore the breathing. So pranayama is a transition point to the stillness of meditation, the delight of being still. And remember, power collects around stillness. So you want to silence the hypnotic chattering of the mon monkey mind, the laziness of the donkey mind, and have a direct feeling of the basic energy the zoom of the universe through the vibration of breath. Third cycle, exhale, block right, open left, inhale.
root lock. Release the lock. Block left, narrow right, exhale. Let the hand drop and restore to breathing. All right, so as we go into our fourth round, which is partially closed left nostril inhale, mula bandha, and then partially closed right nostril exhale, remember that the mula bandha action is to hold the pelvic diaphragm, pull it in and up like you're tightening a drum head, but don't limit the breath by being overly aggressive, by clenching. You have to find out what's the right level of muscular contraction without forcing and strain. The only way you do that is by practice. All right. Exhale the breath. Raise the hand. Block right. Narrow left. Inhale. Now wait there in root lock. Release the lock. Block the left. Narrow the right. And exhale. Drop the hand and restore to breathing. Now every time we exhale, we get a chance to surrender the surface self and leap into the unknown with total confidence, no restrictions, and just develop receptivity. If you're really seeking the extreme end, you got to go into what you don't know. Exhale the breath. Raise the hand. Block the right. Narrow the left. Inhale. Wait there. Pull Mula Bandha. Exhale by blocking left, narrowing the right. Relax the hand, restore to breathing. Now remember, for our last breath here, you want to pull the back body and the shoulder blades down toward the back waistline while the lowest portion of your spine moves under and forward. All right, one last breath, let's try it. Exhale the breath, raise the hand. Block right, narrow left, inhale. Now pull the root lock. Release, block left, narrow right, exhale. Relax your hand and restore to breathing. And slowly raise your head up and open your eyes. All righty. So as we kick out today, I hope there's a lot for you to be thankful for, even in the paradox of, of a year that's crushed so many of our plans and destroyed so many of the other things that we take for granted. And now we have to build back new connections and uh, create more unity in a, in a country that's very divided. But I like to think this way. First of all, I believe that spirit is real. And is it possible that God is less loving than we can conceive of? Because if we can conceive an idea of God that's more noble than the reality of it, that means it makes us illogically the moral superiors of God, which by definition, it's impossible. So there must be something other than what everybody else thinks here, and what everybody worships here, that ain't it. And whatever yoga is pointing at, you know, this is that. 
So <clears throat> the epilogue to leave today is there are as many ways to the one as there are people. So find your exquisite paramour and make love to that. Have a blessed day.